And uh, once we put the cam in, we have a, uh, a nice little chip, not a tune because this car is old, a chip from Tectonics Tuning, and that is going to adjust our uh, engine map for the new cam and raise our rev limit to uh, 7,000 RPM. Might blow the engine up, definitely will make more power. We are bringing our beautiful $500 Volkswagen Fox out of the 24 Hours of Lemons and into Champ Car, which is a much faster racing series, and it's going to be going to a very fast track next, Daytona International Speedway, our home track. So I'm back in the garage alone tonight, thanks to COVID, um, trying to add some more power to our Fox. We already baselined the car at BSI Racing, a local shop in town that mostly deals with much faster cars, but let us borrow the dyno for a few minutes, and this thing only makes 87 horsepower and 95 foot-pounds. So we really need to make a little more power. Um, we have a cam from Tectonics Tuning as well as a chip to support it. And we also have an exhaust system from Tectonics that we're gonna pair with some eBay parts we found and hopefully make about 25 more horsepower. That's ambitious on a car that makes less than 100, but you know we're hopeful. So we're gonna throw the parts at it, go back to the dyno and see what we could do. Okay, first step, we need to put a new camshaft in our Fox. Fortunately, this is actually gonna be quite easy because this is a 92 Jetta drivetrain and that's a single overhead cam engine. So all we need to do is uh, move a couple hoses and such out of the way, pop the valve cover off, and then drop this cam right in there. Maybe a five minute job, or, or 10, but it's not gonna be that hard. And uh, once we put the cam in, we have a, uh, a nice little chip, not a tune because this car is old a chip from Tectonics Tuning, and that is going to adjust our uh, engine map for the new cam and raise our rev limit to uh, 7,000 RPM. Might blow the engine up, definitely will make more power. This is normally when you would put an engine at top dead center, double check that everything lines up with its timing marks, take the timing belt off the right way, take the cam out, take the sprocket off, all of that. We're not gonna do any of that. Instead, I have my beautiful Sharpie, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark the belt with what tooth it's on, and I'm gonna go ahead and mark the tooth on the timing sprocket too. And as long as I don't let this timing belt slip on the crank, as long as I get it back on this mark, we should be good to go. To make it one step easier, I have my beautiful timing belt retainment tool. And I'm just gonna clip that right here, which should pretty lightly keep the uh, timing belt connected to the sprocket as I'm moving things around here. This is the wrong way to do this. Don't do this. But it's quick and we're not that worried about it. So, because this is full of cardboard, and cardboard is paper, which is bad. Um, we want this as clean as possible so we can coat it with assembly lube, but I don't trust whatever's on it and whatever got on it during shipping. So, we're just gonna go ahead and spray it down real good, wipe it down, and treat it like any other dirty old part. You can't make something too clean when you're putting together parts inside an engine, so always err on the side of caution and clean things twice or three times if I can. And usually these will come coated in some kind of a protective oil to keep them from rusting. And I don't know where that oil came from or what's really in it, so no good for my engine, even though it's just the box engine. Now, we've got some CRC engine assembly lube, and I'm going to just coat this can in it. So, assembly lube's role is to lubricate things for the first couple seconds after you first start an engine you just put together. So otherwise we have bare clean metal on bare clean metal, which is absolutely not what you want um, at all ever in an engine. So this will protect it for the first startup until fresh oil can get up there and then the oil will sit on it for the rest of the time. Jesse, good to have you back. How you been? Oh, 
Oh, you know, just hanging in there. Good, good. So uh, I put a cam in here and uh, just gonna get this buttoned up. Yeah, I'm just here to, uh, you know, double check your work. That makes sense. Actually, what we could do is um, we put the valve cover back on. We should put the uh, the timing gear back on, right? Um, yes. We used it at Barber a fair bit, so. Just finished buttoning up the uh, the new camshaft from Tectonics. We're gonna just go ahead and start the car real quick and make sure that everything is good, that our timing's set, and then we'll uh, shut it back off, put the chip in, and work on the exhaust. Moment of truth. <laughs> it definitely sounds different. Did you get it to 7,000 RPMs? No, I went to about 2,500. Oh, that's okay. I wasn't ready to break in the cam yet. Okay. Um, I would say that works. Yep. So a chip is um, basically the part of the engine control unit that actually has the tune. Basically it tells the engine how much fuel and timing to run at each, um, under each situation. Um, on newer cars, you would just plug into the OBD2 port and flash the ECU for most cars. On older cars like this, all that data is actually stored into this little car, into this little uh, EEPROM here. So, step one is to get into it. And you can do that just with a couple screws. Okay, moment of truth. Ooh, ah. So, yep, and also a wooden work surface, which it shouldn't matter, but I always like to reduce the chances of shorting anything. Okay, we'll take this top bit off. So, you can see this chip sits in a socket, that makes it pretty easy to change. And put my little plastic tool here. I'm trying really hard not to bend pins, but sometimes it's inevitable when you're prying something out like that. So, um, I don't know if you can see, there's this little notch here that shows which direction the chip needs to face, and the new tectonics part has the same notch. So. What you have to do is go ahead and drop this right in. Make sure all the pins line up. Okay. And then press it down in. And just like that, we have remapped our ECU, our ECU to take advantage of our new cam. Okay, we just put our tectonics chip in. Now it's time to see if it'll start. I'd say we're good. Okay, bedtime. We're back in the garage. We've got Jesse back. He's out of quarantine. He does not have COVID right no. now. So we're gonna work on our Fox. We've got a, a beautiful exhaust system from Tectonics Tuning, as well as some super rare Audi 80 stock parts uh, from eBay. So we're gonna go ahead and put them on the car and get that 25 horsepower we've been chasing.
Okay, Jesse, what did we just do? So we got the, uh, the manifolds here off and um, found out we got to replace all the studs. Yep. Because but, they're terrible. But the, the important part is we got the manifold off. Yeah, and this one looks like it's going to bolt right on in place and not interfere with anything. Yep, so. and the downpipe swings nicely around the axle. Um, so it looks like we should be able to mock this all up and then yep. mock the rest of our exhaust system up. And then when our studs arrive tomorrow, we can do final assembly and it shouldn't be too bad. You can see how much better they flow though. It's awesome. 25 horsepower. Yeah, I'm gonna make it, 25. This unfortunately does not bolt right into our Fox. So in order to fix that, we're gonna have to modify it. You should cut that again. We're gonna go ahead and cut it right about here and then uh, try fitting it again and uh, see what we need to change. You don't think we should cut it here? No. Let the record reflect that we actually didn't need to cut anything on the uh, exhaust. And to be perfectly honest, if this wasn't, you know, a horrible Volkswagen Fox and was a cool project, I probably would have measured twice. We've decided that instead of cutting the exhaust, we're just gonna slip it into place and cut the transmission. With a bit of modification, our new exhaust was installed on the Fox and we were ready to head back out to the Florida International Rally in Motorsport Park to get some laps in, then go back to the dyno at BSI Racing to see how much power we made. Hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss what happens in the next episode and so you know about all our new content. Support brands that support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.